Many times the reason that a conflict exists is because of some type of scam or a fraud. Frauds take many forms. Sometimes it's a scam online. Sometimes it's a Ponzi scheme. Sometimes it's a corporate fraud or embezzlement. We'll talk about a couple of them, including some that have to do with a fake law enforcement call. Some of them have to do with fake Bitcoin investments. And this one here is an employee of a car dealership that embezzled $1.3 million from their employer. And what they basically did was they created fake companies and had a billing scheme. So this person worked for the company as a freelance advertising and marketing uh, agent. And they were tasked with doing advertising for the dealership. And what they did was created a bunch of fake companies that said, here are companies that did work for the dealership and pay these companies these invoices. And they charged his employer over a million dollars to pay these fake internet companies and siphoned off the money. <clears throat> Come to find out, these weren't even real companies. They were owned by them, owned by the, the fraudster as a shell company, trying to pretend they were legitimate advertising and market firms. Well, that's not what happened. They were just thin air and the money just went to this uh, employee. Another form of fraud is when you're approached by somebody who claims to have an investment. A lot of times this occurs online through Instagram, a dating site, some employment site, and you'll get a message out of the blue that says, hey, I just made all this money on this uh, investment. Sometimes on a dating site, it'll be somebody you're conversing with who shows up in a conversation that says, hey, congratulate me on making all this money. I'm going away for vacation this weekend, or I just bought this new car, or uh, I'm going out to dinner with my friends because I made $10,000 on this investment. And they'll show pictures on social media of their luxury vacation, or their new car, or their um, fancy dinner with champagne bottles. And what it does, it tries to get the other party who you're talking to to ask, well, gee, how'd you make this money? Well, I put my money into this investment in Bitcoin, in bonds, whatever, and I doubled my money in two weeks. And so the person who you're conversing with will ask, well, how did you do that? And so then they'll send you a link and they'll say, well, this is where I put my money. And then you go to that link and now you have a referral from somebody who you think you can trust because you think you're in a dating relationship with them and you see they prove that they made all this money because they have pictures of their vacation on some exotic island. Come to find out, well, guess what? It's all a scam. This person is not really who you think you're talking to. It's a scammer who has these fake investments. And because of the fact that you're maybe enamored by this person or you're trying to show off to this person or because they're faking you out with this uh, social media representation, maybe they have stock photos of somebody on vacation, maybe they rented a car for a day. Now you send them 10, 15, 20, $30,000 as an investment, but they won't stop there. Once you send them 20,000 or 30,000, they'll say, hey, look, your account now is up to 75,000. You put in 30, it more than doubled. You have 75,000 in the account right now. Look, here's your statement. And they send you an official looking account statement. And they say, look, if you hit 100,000 in your account, that 100,000 automatically doubles because you get some kind of bonus. So. All you got to do is get it to 100. So now you send them another 25,000. Your account hits 100. And then all of a sudden they show you a statement for 200,000. And you think you you put in 40,000 and you have 200,000. You you're making a lot of money. And they'll keep asking for money this way right up until the point that you ask for some back. Hey, wait a minute. I made all this profit. I want to take some out. As soon as you start asking to take money out, then they're going to say, "Well, you have to pay taxes." If you want to take out 200,000, you have to pay 10% taxes. So send us 20 grand. Send them 20 grand. And then it's, well, there's an audit fee of 5,000. They'll keep asking you for money for different things until you either realize it's a scam, get mad at them, or run out of money. One of the three. Another type of scam is where you get a phone call from somebody who claims to be in a position of authority, a police department. Uh, IRS tax auditor and says, look, you're in big trouble. 
we have a warrant out for you. Um, your your file has been um, flagged for an audit or for enforcement or for prosecution. Um, your fines are overdue. You owe you know fourteen thousand in fines. You have to pay immediately, and they'll talk you into paying that money. Sometimes they'll tell you it's a relative who's been arrested that needs bond money. And they'll know a little bit about you. They'll go on your LinkedIn, your social media to find out where you live, maybe what kind of house you have, maybe your car. And they'll use that information to help their conversation extract money from you. So we see hundreds of victims of these scams every week. We know it's very difficult. If you have had this type of experience, put your message below. Let us know what your story is about how you've been scammed and what kind of conflict that created for you or your family or your company.